Hello out there. This is DZ, your overlord, Desiran. And welcome back to Trilby's Notes. <laughs> okay, so we're back in once more. Presumably, this is going to be the last episode. We'll see, though. And honestly, this might be so short that I add it to the previous episode. We'll see. But right now we're heading to the basement. That's where Linkman told us to meet him. That's where we're going. One thing is I don't know if he's in this or the regular world. Look around. Grimey saw have been abandoned for some time. A large section of floor was worn away. So when I dug a hole in the foundation large enough to admit a man. What? Look at hole? Wait, this is where the bugs came from, wasn't it? The hole seemed to lead in some kind of tunnel that gradually expanded into an underground cavern. Look at water. In the far corner of the room was a puddle of water created by drips from above. It had a curious color to it, and the drops seemed to glow with their own illumination. The liquid was having a strange effect on a nearby corpse. Drink water? Oh god, come on, mouse. I didn't need to anymore. Okay, fine. Use hole. Whoops. I may regret this. I should probably be more specific. Go in hole. Look around. I was in some kind of cavern dug out of the rock beneath the hotel. It seemed to be in a constant state of flux, flitting back and forth between the real world and its dark twin. It was certain that the gigantic stump in the middle of the floor had something to do with this. Okay. that stump. This was it. I was certain. The remains of the tree that Boyle and his father cut down. Its wood being later used to construct an inn, a harpsichord, a shipping crate, and an idol. I could feel that same scrabbling in my mind that I had felt just before all of my visions. This time, it was the stump itself that seemed to be beckoning me closer. Oh boy. Hang on. Look at rope. I stared blankly. Fine. Look at chains. I spotted some chains hanging from the walls that came and went with Dark World. Perhaps the cave had been used for rituals. Look at symbol. It 
In Dark World, a symbol was drawn out on the stump in blood, a circle containing a square with four triangles around it. Okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Touch stump. Oh. Where are we now? Clan Bronwyn Peninsula. July 28th, 55 BC. Cabadath, a Celtic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague, Galdon, who brings news of the invasion of Anglesey by the Roman... by the Roman... Suetonius Patinus. Patinus? Okay. Having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Cabadath lives in solitude in this remote forest clearing and prefers not to travel himself. Fair enough. Cabadath. Golden, you bring news? The foreigners have landed. They could not be deterred by our sorcery. All is lost. Oh? Certain, are you? The, they are making their way across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you, out here, will be brought down within days. I'm sorry, Cabadath. And the great druids of Anglesey bow so easily to this brash foreign power? Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? You know of my dealings with the ethereal realm? I know what you claim. That there exists some otherworldly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic. And that you, Cabadath, can somehow commune with these creatures? Come inside, and I shall explain. Okay. Cabadath, what is this madness? In my dealings with the ethereal realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and elementals. But there is one spoken of only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon... The most terrible of them all, who strikes fear into even the most unflappable creatures I have spoken with. A pain elemental, indeed, the only pain elemental, ruler of a desolate wasteland where none venture. An invulnerable, hugely potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day, the day when the boundaries between the realms weaken and he glimpses our world. To bring him through at that point should be simple. Even if you could conjure such a thing, how would you have it defend our land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. I completed the preparations while I waited for your return. All that remains is the summoning. Cabadath, it pains me to see you build your hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch. You shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death, and by the light of Galenius's gift, I summon you. I bring you gifts to mark your path. I feed you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bind you by your true name. Chizo, by the gods. I have reached out to you through the void, Chizo. I command you by your true name. Show yourself. Cavadath, please stop this. Show yourself. By Tartarus, it's true. It, it is larger than I anticipated. But Chizo must obey the rules of magic. It is bound. I can command it. Oh. No, you can't. No! It is far more powerful than I thought. Galden, help me! F forgive me, Cabadath. 
No! Galton, I beg you! Don't let it take me alive! Oh. Um. Chizo, of course, has no use for meat. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. Cabadas Agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chizo ensured it would last. Oh no. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. Wait, what? His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. For five centuries, as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved imaginings. Oh my god, okay. Uh, being stuck inside a tree, being unable to move. By then, his body was warped. By then, his body was warped and his mind long fallen into soulless dementia. Okay. He was Chizo's utterly and completely. He was Chizo's utterly and completely his slave. Trilby. So, Siobhan, you were supposed to leave. I couldn't. I just... Abed, the professor, he's dead. I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they will kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? This cave is the center of the reality shift. This stump is what's causing it all. How? It is the vessel for the soul of the tall man. The Acolyte of Chizo. Linkman, nice to see a friendly face. Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roderick could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wood alongside Cabadath's. Infusing the poor retard with Chizo's magic, allowing him to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? Chizo had to wait 2,000 years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between realms. <clears throat> Over which Chizo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Our order has waited 200 years for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You are not with the Ministry of Occultism. Who are you? Two hundred years ago, the Prophet Jack Freehorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then we have grown and watched and waited. It was only in recent years that the events foretold in the Book of Chizo began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe, and it mentioned you. Me? You were the one prophesied to guide the bridgekeeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge, body, and s body, mind, and soul. You only destroyed his body. His soul and mind remained. Had I known about this, I wouldn't even have done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and fulfill your, your fo foretold duty. Is that why you were helping me? They thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you'd understand that the prophecy is real. You honestly believed I'd joined some insane cult just because you handed me some leaflets? Personally? No. Oh! 
The knife in my gut brought an explosion of ice-cold agony. I heard the pitter-patter of blood on the rocky floor. Um, the pain, the surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. Oh. Oh. I awoke to find myself splayed upon the stump, blood still slowly leaking from my wound. In my injured state, I could barely move. My limbs refused to respond. I was as weak as a newborn. Link? Men? Oh good, you're awake. I was afraid you'd miss this. What are you doing? After your staggering ineptitude in Defoe Manor, the Order need a nudge. Need to nudge things along. We need to con a connection to Jizo to help administrate his coming. And today might be the only opportunity we have all year to summon the Tall Man. You're going to bring that thing into our world? With a standard ritual of blessed agonies and an offering. After he takes your life, he will be grateful to us. And then he will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? You won't be. Men like you truly be die on their own terms. They don't weakly let their life slip away from one measly knife wound. Hush now. Kabadath is coming. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I call thee, Kabadath, to the soul, to the wood that is your soul. I call thee from the north. Lockpick, speedy call the wine. Um, use wine. I don't know. It's all I have. I should probably be more specific. Throw bottle. I couldn't do that just then. Um, drink, drink cola? I took a swig of the beverage. I could almost feel the caffeine starting to heat up my brain. Oh, okay. Well, that did something. Funny enough, that did something. Um, th throw wine. That might have made sense in our time and place, but not then. Drink? Oh. Drink wine? I flatter myself in that I am too much of a professional to drown my sorrows. Use bottle. I'd specify whether I meant the wine bottle or the cold bottle. Use wine bottle. Probably be more specific. Throw wine bottle. I wasn't sure how to. Oh my god. Use wine bottle on Lankman. Maybe I can hit him with it. I don't know how to be more specific. Drink. Drink cola. I took a swig of the beverage. I could almost feel the caffeine starting to heat up my brain. Um. Look around? Maybe? Okay. From my position, I could only see a small portion of the Wavering Cavern. I could see the idol of John Defoe on the stump beside me and my bloody waistcoat lying discarded in the corner. Okay. With my other senses, I could detect the presence of Siobhan and the redoubtable Lankman. Um, use... Use wine bottle on idle. I don't know if that'll do anything. I should probably be more specific. Hit idle with wine bottle. 
Oh, okay. Wait, that might have done something. It's glass. My attempts to move only made things worse. I felt stab pain and something snapped behind my eyes, filling my vision with spots. Oh, crap. Drink cola. Drink cola. Kick idol? I don't know. I was losing blood steadily. My arms and legs were limp and unresponsive. I couldn't move. Um. Oh god. Throw wine bottle. That didn't make sense to me. Shit, I don't know what I'm doing. Use wine bottle. It's probably uh, on tall man. Wait, okay, what's it saying? Please, come on, game. I need you to... I should probably be more specific. Reality flits from realm to realm, tormented, confused. End this madness that we might bring thee to us. Uh... Uh, wait, did something pop up then? Use wine bottle on Link Linkman? Get up. I was losing blood steadily, my arms on- Oh my god, um... Uh-oh. Speedy call on wine. Um, body, mind, and soul. Oh my god, stop that. Come. Okay, I should- I- should I wait for him to appear and then try to do something? Come. Throw... Okay, use wine bottle. You're gonna tell me to be more specific, aren't you? I should probably be more specific. Use wine bottle on tall man. Use, oh no, use wine bottle on idle. Use wine bottle on tall man? Now that he's closer? <sighs> Use wine on idle. Should probably be more specific. Use wine on Lankman? Oh. This concludes text with notes found in the Clem Brahman Hotel on August 4th by the STP. STP. Damn it! Okay. Okay. Restore. God damn it, I'm back where we started. Okay. I'm gonna cut here, and we'll be back when I get this figured out. Just, just trust me. We'll be back shortly. My vision was clouding up around the edges. It seemed like my stubborn will was the only thing keeping me alive. Is that a clue?
God damn it. Um, what do I do? I'm gonna try this one more time. Break wine bottle. No, that doesn't do anything. Give up? It said my will is the only thing keeping me alive. That didn't make sense to me. Um, oh, shit. Don't know. The plane was now replaced with an ice cold numbness that was spreading fast. The room was swimming before my eyes. Okay. Reality flits from realm to realm, tormented, confused. So, they're making me a sacrifice for this guy. I can't move. End it, Cabadath. What does it say? It was becoming harder and harder to breathe. Air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzz saw. Present thee with blessed agonies, body, mind, and soul. Okay. Represent thee with the guide, failed in his duty for thee to judge. Oh boy. I'm not seeing any. Oh, there we go. My vision was clouding up around the edges. It seemed like my stubborn will was the only thing keeping me alive. So they want to use me as a sacrifice for this guy. I've tried everything I can think of. Um. Okay. This is going to be stupid, but I tried saying give up before. Die. I died. What? Uh, what? What? He's dead? No, that's not possible. Master? Master, please, no! 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 Ah! Trilby? Go back, Trilby. Leave me alone. I'm dead. Not yet. Not fully. Your mind and soul are drifting apart from your body. With enough power, there is still time to pull them back. But you must have the will to return. Forget it. I've had enough. I did the assignments. I made myself useful. I lived up to the reputation Defoe Manor gave me. 
Today I gave everything I could, and I still died. There is still work to be done. You have not yet completed your duty. I'm sick of duty. I'm sick of prophecy. Just let me sleep. Stronger men than you have tried to fight destiny. None succeed. Past, present, and future are all different faces of the same die, and few can see them all at once. But I can, and the future demands that you live. Return now. I have marked the path. Please, just let it end. Pleading to me is useless. I am just as much a prisoner of fate as you. The future your actions are destined to bring about has already taken place. Without your part, I would not be here to restore you to life. So you see, by my mere presence, your decision is already made. Who are you? A murderer, and a madman, and a puppet of forces neither of us could possibly comprehend. John Defoe? Trilby, say something. What? You're alive. Oh God, I didn't even know if I was doing it properly. But I did it. You're alive. Where's Linkman? That tall man took him. He did something horrible to him. And then he took him away. Where's, where's my waistcoat? Shh, don't talk. I've already called for an ambulance. Let's get you back upstairs. Wait, see that wooden idol? Yes? Bring it with us. Wrap it tightly in clothes and bring it with us. Don't let it touch your bare skin. Uh, okay. What the... So that was, like, okay. How was I supposed to... And now it sits across from me. The reality shift had cleared up and we were free to leave. An STP cleanup crew arrived with the ambulance. What'd that say? No trace of Abed or the hotel staff was found. Officially, they've been classified as unexplained disappearances. Linkman and the tall man seem to have also vanished, which does not surprise me in the least. Siobhan signed the Official Secrets Act, and last I heard is staying with her parents to recuperate. Which just leaves me to write up my notes, with the idol that haunts my dreams gazing at me from across my desk. Okay. The one you're going to launch into space. I was dead. I can't pretend I wasn't. No amount of CPR could have brought me back from where I was. But, but who did? So who did? The man in red? Who was he? If not an insane hallucination in brain death. Unimportant. I am alive, and that's all that matters. Just that, and the destiny of this wretched statuette that I am apparently fated to carry out. Every instinct in my being wants to burn it to ashes and grind them into the dirt, but I do not. Linkman spoke of a prophecy, that the destruction of John Defoe's soul would somehow help him and his order summon their dark god. Oh, whoops. So if I destroy the idol, they win. But what else can I do? Uh, huh? I certainly can't keep it. I know from experience that it takes malevolent influence like a broken pipe that it leaks malevolent influence like a broken pipe leaks water. The only other option is to hide it, but where can I hide such a thing and ensure that it is never found again by human hands? That's why you sent it into space. I still have to think about this. Drill B 29-7-1997 
The fulfillment of the prophecy continues. The ritual for the summoning of Chizou will go ahead. Events have been set in motion that cannot be stopped. Oh, hi. We have the blood of the guide. Now we must wait. Wait and prepare. One, at this time there came a man from the land of technology, and though his wisdom was great and his power advanced, he had the willfulness of his fellows, and so he was the arrogant man. And on the eighth and twentieth day of the seventh month of the year of the arrogant man, the king gazed upon the land of technology and saw that, what? O king, I beseech you, for this land has become corrupt without your benevolent hand, and darkness seeks to envelop all. I demand of you to cross the border between our lands and make things right, for my power is great as I have... Oh my god. And the king was rightly amused, for while the arrogant man's power was indeed great, the king's power was greater still. And the king said, I will not submit myself, for firstly, my power is greater than yours, and not yours to command. Secondly, while my capabilities are many, it is impossible for me to enter the land of technology, for the border is a dark and treacherous ocean I cannot will away. But I will do this for you, O oh arrogant man, for all that bigness of your head, you are still small enough to be... Oh god. I shall rescue from darkness in the land of technology, and you shall live in the household, and here you will learn humility. And as the king said it, so was it so, and the arrogant man crossed the ocean to the house of the king, where he was brought before his majesty, who said, Now you must repay me for this slight your arrogance caused me, for despite your insult, I love you as I love every man and beast. What the hell? And the king took the body and mind of the arrogant man and separated them from his soul, and this he placed in a great tree in the land of technology, and with this action he announced, Now you are the tree, and the tree is you, and the wood is your soul. With this gift of separation your body shall not wither or die throughout your lessons. But should any man interfe interfere with the tree that is your soul on the day that is mine, I shall lend you, oh God, and then he touched the arrogant man and filled his heart with his warming love, and the arrogant man became the prince, and he knew the name of the king. And the prince in the court of the king bowed down and wept and sang with great praise the name of the king, for great and generous was his wisdom. The Book of Chizou, Book of the Prince, Chapter 2. Or the Books of Chizou, Book of the Prince, Chapter 2. I could not keep up with that. That was too fast. <laughs> Trilby's Notes. Oh, man. Okay. Conceived, written, designed, pro okay. There we go. We did it. We beat it. This is going to be a bit of a longer episode. Well, slightly. A little, little bit longer. Original soundtrack, Mark Lovegrove. This was uh, a little nuts. Also, I don't know how long it took me to uh, figure out to just die at the end there. I mean, the clue was that his own, his will was the only thing it seemed keeping him alive. That's why I said give up first. Maybe. And that didn't do anything. So then the next wording would have been just die. But I didn't type it in in time. Everyone who demanded another Trilby game. <laughs> But now this makes me wonder, where does this fourth game go? The fourth game being called Six Days a Sacrifice. <laughs> well, there we have it. The end of Trilby's Notes. I hope you all enjoyed this insanity. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the, the effort it took me to get that end to actually finish it. I mean, okay. The game was pretty... I enjoyed the game a lot, and you can you could follow the clues decently in this one. You just had to look at everything. Occasionally there are little things that pissed me off a bit, like having to look at something a second time to get extra information. They should have just given it the first time, but they didn't, so... Eh. And then of course there were times where just a message would pop up and I didn't notice it, and I, I missed it, so that, that happened. Ah, damn. But no, these have been fun. I've enjoyed them a lot. And I look forward to the next one. This, so, I, I'm i thinking the red man is actually, that person who was talking to Trilby when he was dead, I think that's John Defoe. Maybe. 
or the spirit of Kabadath. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm assuming in the next game we'll learn a bit more about this and presumably stop the summoning of Chizo? Or will they succeed? I don't know. But if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this game, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you want to see more, and share it with anyone else you think might enjoy it. If you want to suggest a game, leave it in the comments below, and check out links in the description for Trilby's Notes if you do want to try it for yourself. Also, check out links in the description for Votka. He's a good friend of mine. He's the one who requested I play these games. We'll be moving on to the fourth game after this. Um, I've been enjoying them a lot. Uh, very interesting. And uh, I was glad to do it. Always, always love me some decent horror games, even if they are in a week. Like, these ones have been steadily getting more horrifying as it went, so I actually really like this. Um, but links in the description there for their YouTube channel. They only started up recently, so go check them out. You won't regret it. And next time, well, we'll be starting the fourth and final game, Six Days a Sacrifice. And, well... We'll see how that insanity goes. <sighs> I honestly don't know what to expect at all. But until then, this is DZ, your overlord, Desiran. You all have a great day. And I'll see ya. <laughs>